Welcome back to Nighthawk Films, everyone. My name is Ian Allen, and today I am bringing you a special video that I have actually been working on for the past uh, couple weeks, actually. Uh, lately, I've been trying to record some videos, and every time I record, something goes wrong. Uh, for instance, I was playing Simulacra a couple days ago, and I, the creepy thing is, for those of you who know about the game Simulacra, I was playing the game, and when, the, and when like, I don't know, maybe like 30 minutes in or so, my recording got corrupted. And for some reason, when it got corrupted, OBS Studios was like glitching. So I had to uninstall and then reinstall it, which was very, very freaky for me. So I don't know if I'm going to play it on the channel again, just because of that one factor. Um, I recently was playing uh, The Backroom's Lost Tapes. I will be playing that again. However, when I was doing it, I was putting in a code for... A certain uh, part in the game and I must have accidentally hit one of the keybinds that changes the scenes so the entire video for like well for the first 20 minutes there's game footage and then for like the last 50 minutes it's just this it's just this so I'll have to replay through it again and they hate that but luckily I had this video prepared so for those of you who know me I am a huge Marvel fan and I mean a huge Marvel fan. So because of that, what I'm going to do, and actually what I've been working on for the past couple of years, I've been trying to make my own MCU timeline. And I think I made a few videos on uh, showing off my new timeline, adding in like the X-Men, Venom, and the Fantastic Four. But this one is going to be a little bit different. I'm actually going to be going into a greater depth and a greater detail. Now, each I'm actually going to divide this up into uh, four videos because, or maybe maybe five, uh, because of each like you know phase. Um, but what I could also do is talk about everything in the in the episode that's up until the next Avengers. So I'll start from the first one, or the first thing in the in the timeline, and go all the way up into Avengers, and then stop there go from the beginning of the one that comes after that, uh, which would be Iron Man 3, then go to Age of Ultron, uh, and then start there, start the next video, start with Ant-Man, and go to uh, Endgame, or stuff like that. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. I could just make it one long video, but I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll make these four, three videos separately, and then merge them into one. Anyway, let's uh, get into it. In hindsight, I probably should have had PowerPoint up. Now, on top of that, I'm also planning on trying to maybe make uh one if you guys like this video i might make one of these for dc make my own timeline and my own story for dc i welcome you guys to a new marvel cinematic universe a new mcu warning ahead these are my own personal ideas if you don't like them then make your own mcu with your own story most of the main mcu movies will happen the same with just some different endings uh, some movie plots won't be explained in full detail. I'm only going to cover important details that need to be addressed. Also, some of the characters will look different to make this new MCU look more interesting. That, or they are just stand-ins because I couldn't find one. Okay. Year 1942 and 1943, Captain America, the first Avenger. Just like the actual movie, the events happen the same. Nothing new changes to the timeline yet. We start with this, and that's it. Next, we head to the year 1962, almost 20 years after the events of the first Avenger. We head to X-Men First Class. Throughout the last 20 years, humanity begins to change with humans unlocking abilities and being called mutants. It wasn't until a man named Charles Xavier started a team of heroes to teach them about their powers and how to use them. They were the first X-Men team. This team had Professor X, Beast, Magneto, Havoc, and Mystique. Now, obviously, uh, some of the X-Men goes back and forth. I'm trying to find a way to connect them all properly through this uh, story. And like I said, some of them look different a little bit right off the bat, and they will probably stay that way just as stand-ins, because I know we eventually change uh, the actor for Charles Xavier and Magneto to, uh, I don't remember. <laughs> I, know, I know it's Patrick Stewart. Anyway, uh, now we head three years later. 
I looked this up. I had to look this one up. Uh, we had to... This is this wouldn't be a movie. If anything, this would be a, a short mini-series about the birth of S.H.I.E.L.D. And I'm putting Nick Fury here just because he is one of the characters who represents or is represented by S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, in this timeline, S.H.I.E.L.D. is more involved with the world and the changes that it will bring. 1975. Now, this one is my own personal theory. You guys can accept it or not. This is what I'm going with. Ten years after the foundations of S.H.I.E.L.D. were made, there were four individuals who were working for them. Two of them were scientists, and the other two were S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. One day, two scientists were testing their experimental machine that focused on quantum energy, who they shared ideas with another scientist named Hank Him, had an accident that caused an explosion. The two S.H.I.E.L.D. agents who were in some ways involved along with the two scientists got caught in the blast. After the explosion, the energy began to suck them towards their machine and were taken to a place called the Quantum Realm. When they landed, they found out that their DNA had been altered. One of them was invisible, one could stretch their limbs, one was on fire, and one was a walking rock. While they were in the Quantum Realm, they learned how to use their powers and eventually leave the realm. But when they returned, something was very wrong with the world. Now, as you can clearly see, I don't say when the Fantastic Four get or get out until later on in this series. So, uh, like I said, some of these characters will just look like stand-ins. They're just here, and yeah, I got and I gotta say, I gotta give credit to the people who did the artwork for these because they are incredible. And another thing I'm just now realizing is that uh, Johnny Storm ironically looks like Andrew Garfield. But I guess you could say since Andrew Garfield is a Spider-Man in another universe, let's say Andrew Garfield in, the MC in this new MCU is the Human Torch. Because when we head to 1979, we get X-Men Origins Wolverine. This movie's events happen the same with how Logan became the Wolverine, his skeleton getting filled with adamantium, and his mutant powers getting stronger. The only difference is that at the end of this movie, as Logan is drinking in a bar, he is approached by a young Nick Fury, the newest trainee to S.H.I.E.L.D., and tells Logan, You're different from other uh, humans, Logan. Logan is confused on how this man knows his name. Fury replies, We've kept tabs on you and your whereabouts. We also heard how you were experimented on. We'd like to ask for your help in the future. Can, you, can we rely on your help? Logan responds, who is we anyways? The camera turns to Fury saying, S.H.I.E.L.D. So this kind of gives uh, the first birth to the first, I guess, mutant that kind of joins up with S.H.I.E.L.D. or S.H.I.E.L.D. is, uh, you know, learning about. We head to 1995. Captain Marvel. The events of the Captain Marvel movie happen the same, with some tiny references about the four people who went missing in the S.H.I.E.L.D. experiment, and the whereabouts of a mutant with metal claws. Fury realizes that there are bigger threats out there in the universe that they are not strong enough to fight alone. This is when Fury begins to look for other superpowered beings. Now, here's where I think, in my opinion, it gets very interesting, and if anything, Everything that happens before Iron Man, I honestly want to just call it Phase X because it mostly involves the X-Men. So, the first X-Men. As time goes on, more humans begin to develop powers. Charles has opened his own school for the gifted mutants with some of his old, with some of his old teammates being teachers, such as Magneto, Mystique, Beast, and Cyclops. Charles had found some new mutants to join the X-Men team, such as Phoenix, Storm, and Rogue. In the last 20 plus years, Logan eventually found his way to Xavier. The reason why Logan joined Xavier is that he remembered the words of Nick Fury asking him to help others. By the end of this movie, Magneto starts to have second thoughts about the, uh, his involvement with the X-Men, but there isn't any time to think as someone knocks on the door of the school, revealing Nick Fury at the door with a young mutant who he thinks can do some good under the wisdom of Charles. So as you can see, uh, I'm basically like the type of story I'm telling is just tiny, tiny details. So either like events ha still happen the same in the movie, but these uh, details that are like either in the beginning of the movie, middle of the movie, end of the movie, they're just kind of these tiny details that are just here and there. Uh, and literally right like seconds after the last movie, we go to X-Men 2. I'm actually going to be calling this X-Men Alliance. 
Nick Fury brings a mutant called Nightcrawler to the School of the Gifted. Fury and Xavier talk about what they should do with Nightcrawler. After a long conversation, Xavier accepts Nightcrawler into the school, while him and his team agree to join S.H.I.E.L.D. to help with future fights if need be. Fury stays with them for the most part of the movie to see how they would work together. By the end of this movie, Magneto leaves the X-Men leaving no trace of him anywhere. Then we head to two years later. Uh, even though this is called X-Men The Last Stand, I'm actually going to be calling this X-Men Extinction. Two years later, after the agreement with S.H.I.E.L.D., the public begins to despise mutants. However, a scientist group has made a mutant cure to get, for getting rid of their powers. Some of the X-Men decide to take the cure, along with other students at Xavier's school. Rogue is one of the X-Men who take the cure, but because of this, she is killed by a mutant who was, was on a rampage. She couldn't defend herself. Others don't take it and continue to stand for their own kind. Magneto comes out of the ashes with his own team of mutants to kill the scientists who produced the cure to stop the extinction of their own kind. Charles and his team start a war over the cure. In the end, Charles and his team convince Magneto to stand down. In return, him and his team will never use their powers again and go into hiding. Because of this, Magneto and his team are arrested by S.H.I.E.L.D. and Fury tries to convince the X-Men that they will need them when the time comes. Xavier replies, if the Earth is near its end, we will come out of hiding, but until then, we shall leave. Xavier closes his school, however, Fury keeps or continues to keep, to keep tabs on them. So, basically, that's kind of that's that's kind of how my understanding of this is that this is how they're leaving. Uh, they're like going into the shadows, so they're still in the MCU, but just here and there. There was another theory that I was almost tempted to use is that in uh, Endgame, when they when Hulk mentions that you know the snap produces gamma radiation energy, what if the, the theory is that what if uh, you know in the last couple year, last five or six years, when three snaps have gone off, it produced so much gamma energy it actually created mutants. So what if the snap from Infinity War and Endgame created mutants? Which is an interesting theory, in my opinion. I think that's a cool theory. There's also another theory that when Ego came to Earth or went to discover other planets or stuff like that. He ended up actually coming to Earth and creating mutants when he was going on the, his um, uh, quest for offspring, I guess. That's just something. So trying to bring these guys in was a little bit tricky here and there. Now, in my opinion, I'm not entirely sure. Everyone thought that this movie took place in the same year it came out. But after doing some research, I have found out that Iron Man, I believe, takes place in 2010. Uh, I also, I originally thought it was 2009, but I think it's actually 2010. The Iron Man movie happens the exact same way with no real differences. However, the only difference is that when Nick Fury shows up, he is not alone. He is accompanied by Logan to ask him about the Avengers initiative. Now, the reason why Logan is with Fury instead of in hiding is because Logan still uses his powers and doesn't really care about the deal with Magneto. Uh, and then, because like in Iron Man 2, it starts off with six months later. So maybe it was like September or August in 2010, and then six months later, we head to Iron Man 2. The Iron Man 2 happens the exact same way. During this time, the events of the Incredible Hulk, Thor, and Captain America waking up from the ice are, are happening in the same week. This is what is known as Fury's Big Week, and we get introduced to War Machine and Black Widow. Also in 2011, The Incredible Hulk, the events of this movie happen the same, with the only difference being that Mark Ruffalo was brought in sooner, instead of Edward Norton. <laughs> uh, then, same... Same time, Thor, events of this movie happen the same. Now we head to 2012, The Avengers. After Loki comes to Earth to rule it, Fury is forced to assemble the Avengers for the first time. Hulk, Hawkeye, Black Widow, Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor. Up until the fight in New York, the six Avengers fight the Chitauri the best they can. While the six Avengers are fighting, Fury picks up a signal over Wolverine's tracker in New York. Fury tells Thor to head to the signal of Logan and have him join the fight. Wolverine teams up with the Avengers to take down Loki. At the end of this movie, there is the first Thanos credit scene. It then goes to Nick Fury at a S.H.I.E.L.D. prison with someone watching the news of what happened down in New York. 
So Magneto turns around to Fury, saying, He promised he wouldn't use his powers anymore if I turned myself in. He knew what would happen if he used his powers. Fury replies, Yeah, he used his powers because he didn't care about your little agreement, and he needed to save lives. Magneto says, Well then, if he, uses his, if he used his powers to save lives, I shall use my powers to end his life. So basically when it comes to this movie, like literally the events happen the exact same up until the fight with New York or fight in New York where Wolverine joins in. Now, you're probably wondering where is Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield Spider-Man? Well, my my thinking is I don't think it would be I guess you could say right to add three Spider-Man in one specific oh, sorry. Uh, in three, in three Spider-Man in one universe. Now, and, and when you think about it, when we, when we, when, blah, 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 when we get to No Way Home, they will still come in to the MCU. Now, I'm also still technically working on this, but currently I've put a, a halt to it because I have gotten up to uh, where we're currently at in the MCU right now. So anything after that, I'll just have to make predictions. So I'll still be bringing in Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. But that won't be until for a later date. And so, like I said, I think we'll just go from the beginning of where I started to the to an Avengers movie. So I think that will be it for this, uh, I guess, phase. I guess you could call this phase one slash phase X because uh, we bring in the X-Men. So this is my new timeline that I have created so far. I hope you guys like it. Basically, I brought, I was able to bring in most of the X-Men and I was even able to introduce the Fantastic Four a little bit earlier. It was a bit, it was a bit tricky for me to uh, place the Fantastic Four, uh, mostly because in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, when Reed Richards shows up, uh, Mordo says like, and the smartest man alive, Mr. Er, Reed Richards from the Fantastic Four, Doctor Strange from our universe, the MCU, looks up at him and says, didn't you guys chart in the 60s? I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a reference to the comic books or an actual hint at the actual Fantastic Four. Uh, since uh, Marvel is more still used is actually making their own Fantastic Four movie, it's not going to be an origin story movie, which is pretty interesting because I think it's because we already know how they're, they already get their powers. So we just want to see them actually living in this new reality. But we don't know if it's going to be like a time period, if it's going to be like set in like 1967 or 19... 19- in the 60s or something and they get trapped in the quantum i personally think that they'll get stuck in the quantum realm and that's how they get their powers that's that's my personal theory i'm gonna go with it uh so yeah that is everything up from captain america the first avenger to avengers of 2012 yeah uh it was so because i've had other iterations where i had andrew garfield spider-man uh in this universe in and that's kind of another reason why i didn't want to put a specific Spider-Man in here is because the first, their first three movies or the first two movies would happen like way before Tom Holland's Spider-Man would even show up. So, cause I'm like, yeah, if I do Tobey Maguire or I mean, Andrew Garfield's in 2012 before Avengers, and then he teamed up with the Avengers in 2012. And then in 2014, uh, in phase two, having that be like the era of the sequels, but then he gets, I, I he gets his third movie in phase three, but then, you know, Far From Home and No Way Home wouldn't even happen. Those those movies wouldn't even happen. I guess you could make that Spider-Man 5 and, or 4 and 5, but well, that could have been with Tobey Maguire. Eh, it's fine. Either way, they, they will show up eventually later on down the road in No Way Home. And I'll probably, when I get to um, Secret Wars and other stuff like that, I might do something with that. But uh, for right now, this is the new current timeline. I'm probably going to just record, like, everything and just divide into sections. But anyway, that is this new reality. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys liked it. So with that being said, remember to share this video with your friends and family. I hope you guys have an amazing day and I will see you guys in the next video. And let me know what your guys' thoughts are on this new timeline so far. Personally, I love it. But granted, I made the damn thing. So of course I'm gonna like it. But unless you guys uh, have any opinions of yourselves, have any things you wanna add, uh, like I said, this is my personal opinion. This is my story that I want to tell. You guys can make your own timelines for all I care. Go nuts.